relationships outside the realm of the market. And I think this is something that needs to be community-led, and, and it starts with us in places like this, in groups like this, uh, on nights like this. So I'm, I'm very happy I can be part of it. First of all, I, I, I want to thank all my panelists for, for uh, shedding light on this issue in your own uh, various ways. Um, I feel that I have a very difficult task of being the last <laughs> to say something after everything that I wanted to highlight has already been said. But with that said, I will still try to add um, other things to this discussion. And I, I'd like to follow, to follow up on where the last speaker left off, which is basically for me, um, as a writer, I believe in the power of language to communicate um, what human beings um, uh, need and they don't know they need and how we can change the dialogue so that it becomes um, a dialogue that talks more about our common humanity and put, put this in more human terms as opposed to political terms or however people want to look at it. I oftentimes, when I'm watching television, when people talk about the environment, um, Particularly in, in this country, there's more of, a, of a, a split in a lot of ways between people saying that, well, environmentalists are all these liberal wackos, and, and then the rest of um, the other people who think that, oh, well, the world is not really what people are saying. This is just how it is. This is just liberals that are going off on tangents. And for me, I've always laughed at this because the simple uh, explanation I have in my head is that if there is a storm, if there's a fire, if there's a tsunami, it's not going to come and ask you, hey, are you liberal or conservative before I burn your house or, or before I, I, the, the flood sweeps you away? It's not going to ask you that question at all. Uh, when these things happen, they affect all of us. Um, and so for me, as a writer, I feel like there has, we have to find a way to speak about this by infusing as much human context to the discussion of how uh, the interconnectedness with our natural world, with our social world and our political world, and how all of these things together, they change uh, all of us, not just one person and this person or that person or that tribe or this person's color and so forth or somebody's economic, uh, you know, sort of where the economic state is in the culture. So that's really what I want. And in order for me to highlight this a little bit more, I want to talk about where I'm from in Sierra Leone. I grew up in a small village, perhaps where your life is directly impacted by the environment when you wake up in the morning. You wake up to birds singing. If the birds don't sing, you know there's something terribly wrong. So you can tell. So, but I think sometimes when people live in cities and environments where there's not that immediate relationship to the environment, it is hard to make that discussion. Now, another thing that I want to highlight before I, I, I go on with these examples is that we must also be very careful that even good ideas can become very dogmatic. So we have to be open to other people's interpretation of how we look at these things, sensible interpretations. We can disagree with people, but uh, as, as Jake said, not in the, in the sense that we cannot throw away their value system. We can also use people's values to actually make this make sense to them in the way that can be beneficial for them as well. And also I think the human race, we're very interested in this sort of quick, rapid fix that we can just decide, oh, this is too bad, let's fix it tomorrow. Things don't work that way. We have to lay a foundation. So for me, sustainability, it's, it's an empowerment uh, issue for me. It should be looked at as an empowerment of being given the right information so that we can make those decisions that can be good for us and the generations that follow afterwards. So that we can know that when I consume, if I consume everything, then there's nothing left for my neighbor. My neighbor could actually pretty much become a criminal, and that would affect my life eventually. Let me explain this in a little bit more, and in the more concrete terms. In Sierra Leone, where I'm from, in the south of the country, there's a terrible environmental degradation that's going on there because in this country we have a lot of minerals. And so a lot of companies come from the outside and they dig the minerals. And as a child, one of the first, perhaps even indirect, ways that this began to affect the community socially uh, and, and, and financially, economically, and everything uh, is, is first of all, waters were polluted because for them to dig uh, one of the minerals called rutai is that they have to create an artificial dam 
so they flood the area so that the dredge, the machine, will be able to dig. Now, during this period, what happened is that some of the dams will slip into the natural water that people used to fetch and drink, and that was clean and good. And what happened, people began to be sick. Uh, people could no longer find this water. Uh, some families began, you know, maybe the breadwinner of the family died off because they had some kind of disease that they couldn't cure. So what happened, the child of that family becomes an orphan. What happens when there's anything in the community, they become a thief or something happens, they easily... So I, what I want to, to show is the relationship between how what we think is this problem that only is like, you know, if there is if the art is going to sink and things like that happen. These things happen at a very small stages that we don't want to look at. When we ignore them, what that does socially change the way the social network works in the community. We are no longer people who maybe their house is being burnt down because people are cut in the trees and things of that sort, or uh, a farmer who will no longer be able to grow their seed because it's not raining very much because of what's done to the environment. Uh, they become so distressed, they become so removed from the community that they actually become a problem to the community. So for me, I want to look at growing up in, in this area where you can see the direct impact of what happens. I want to change the dialogue, the way we explain this as a writer, so that we can make it into more concrete human terms, how our relationship changes when our environment changes, how our relationship changes when our social uh, uh, sort of li liaisons changes, how that even impacts the environment as well. To further this, for example, when um, this company was in Sierra Leone, one of the other things that happened is that some of the materials that they used to, to do this mining were things that had plastic materials. So what happens is that people who live in these communities who now have to walk miles and miles to be able to find the clean drinking water have to utilize some of these, uh, these materials. And when these materials are not uh, sustainable in the sense that they will burst, uh, things like that, they throw it on the land and that affects the soil so the crops don't grow properly. And then they need fertilizer to grow the crops. And so when they become reliant on the fertilizer, some people can't afford fertilizer so they can't grow anymore because the land is bad. So the problem increasingly gets worse and worse. And that brings about hunger. That brings about other things in the community. So for me, these are some of the things I really feel that we need to change the way um, we speak about this issue. We need to put it more in human terms and we need to refrain from attacking people from sort of um, getting in, 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 uh, in, in arguments with people about very, as, as you said, very simple minor things that would not make any movement at all in this issue. Another thing is that when it comes to sustainability also, I think people need to be, particularly people who live in environments that are not close to nature, they need to be educated about where the source of food comes from, about what they eat. I'll tell you a very funny example. I, I was friends with some American kids who grew up in, uh, in New York all their lives. They've never been anywhere. And we went to Sierra Leone. Uh, I took some of them with me back home. And uh, back home, because people are so connected to what you eat, you know where your chicken is when it's killed, you know where your goat is when you want to kill, you know. So people are connected to this. And one of the kids was very upset because people were killing the chicken. And he felt this was really terrible. And this is, this is not good, and so on and so forth. And then I asked him a simple question. So, do you eat chicken? He said, yes. And I was like, where do you get your chicken from? He said, at the, at the store. You know. <laughs> it's very interesting because his relationship to what he eats, is he doesn't know. So he feels, and I said to him, oh, do you think that the chickens in your store in America, they just walk to the store and say, put me in a package. I want to be eaten <laughs> by some human beings, you know? But for me, this was very, this was a, a, something that hit me and I realized people need to know where their food is coming from. Because I think then they would think more when they're consuming it. Because they would think when you have that chicken in front of a plate, when you're eating it, there's so many people who went to work to make that possible. And this is not to make people afraid, it's just to make people appreciate what, what it is, where these things are coming from. And I think if we do appreciate these things, we begin to understand the interconnectedness of all the processes that have to happen for our food to happen, for everything in our lives to happen and the people that are responsible for that. And I think if we do that, then we can respect the rights of farmers, we can respect people who grow these kinds of crops, and so on and so forth, so that everyone at the end of the day is empowered with something, so that when these things are produced, it's at the benefit of all of us, on that human terms of it. Now, I'm not sure how much time I have. How, how, stay out of some time? Uh, about three minutes. About three minutes. Okay. 